other one's just like over top of her. And like, that's so powerful. Yeah, and kinda. like, as the whites would say, like savage. Yeah, I was savage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's awesome. And like, I want to embody that. I want to be that yeah. savage. One yeah, I want to be that. I want to be savage <laughs> in that way. Yeah. yeah. The Transformative Marks podcast explores how Indigenous tattoo artists, cultural tattoo practitioners, and ancestral skin markers transform this world for the better, dot by dot, line by line, and stitch by stitch. My name is Dion Kazis. I'm a Hungarian, Métis, and Intikatmuk professional tattoo artist and ancestral skin marker. I started the work of reviving my ancestral Intikatmuk skin marking practice over a decade ago. I have helped, supported, and trained practitioners and tattoo artists here on Turtle Island. In this podcast, I sit down with Indigenous tattoo artists, cultural tattoo practitioners, and ancestral skin markers from across the globe, bringing you behind the scenes of this powerful, transformative, and spiritual work. Yeah, thanks for having me. My name's Audie Murray. I work primarily as a visual artist. Uh, and part of that practice includes traditional tattooing, so skin stitching, hand poke, but I also work a lot with uh, reclaimed material through drawing, sculpture, um, also more like contemporary beadwork styles within uh, that practice. I'm currently based in Regina, Saskatchewan, Treaty 4 territory. I grew up here. My family is from the area. So my mom's family is Métis from Labret, which is in the Capel Valley. And my dad's family is from Meadow Lake, which is like about six hours north of the city. So, uh, and that family is Métis too, um, with like Cree ancestry. And I grew up here. I'm then I left and I came back like two years ago. So yeah. uh, I just mentioned all that because like family and and home yeah. and land is like all important yeah, big time. in the in our practices. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Awesome. So uh, before we, you know, there's quite a few little threads that we can pull on to just talk about. But totally. I just want to get a sense, you know, because uh, this. You know, the reason I'm asking folks to come in to talk is uh, in the way that we're connected is through tattooing or ancestral skin marking, cultural tattoo practitioner, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, I will, yeah, just get you to share kind of what, you know, uh, sparked you to get into tattoos, you know, maybe just to get them. And then secondly, you know, how did you come into tattooing and what has that journey been Mm -hmm. since you started? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I got a tattoo like as soon as I could. Yeah. Uh, and I got an owl on my foot because it's like similar to a tattoo like my mom had that I remember oh, being cool. really infatuated with as like a kid. Yeah. Um, so definitely like that interest in like yeah. tattoos yeah. and arts in general is something I just have yeah. always been yeah. drawn to. So getting tattoos was like, super fun yeah for me um and something that I you know was kind of toyed around with maybe doing one day but Mm. just never really found like a space where I was like oh yeah I feel I feel like this could be like my space or like my my groove you know um and I also just like didn't feel like I wanted to like tackle those hurdles at that point in my life of like really young uh and like learning about life still um so I went to art school and then after art school I saw the the open call for earthline tattoo Mm -hmm. and applied and uh went through that program which is of course where I met you and like a lot of other amazing folks and like that way of working was just so lined up with like my art practice and Mm -hmm. just like where I was in life and how I wanted to like continue to grow as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that it was really easy in a sense, you know, like it wasn't easy, but it was like, it just fell into place, um, 
which is always a good sign. Yeah, so, when things align and it's just like, yeah. it, feels, it feels right. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I felt comfortable in that space and yeah, really felt like I was in like a place where I could start kind of like sharing things more mm. um, or like trying to like support community, my indigenous community a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so tattooing's like has always been like a really gener generative way to do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty cool to uh, be able to speak with folks that have been through Earthline, you know, cause sometimes yeah. we're like <laughs> come together and then we go do our other things and we come back together every once in a while. Uh -huh. So, and then what, what year did you do Earthline? 2017? 2017 in so, Kelowna. Wow. So yeah. that was a while ago. Yeah. 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 Six years ago. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. I and then know. you came on and uh, assisted Earthline with uh -huh. um, admin administrative stuff and then mm -hmm. uh, helped out uh, in other ways. So do you want to just... Uh, talk about maybe not about that part of it i just wanted to acknowledge that you did help with earthline after you had graduated and mm -hmm. you know uh just share that so people are aware that you were part of uh the successive other tattoo schools that came along after you were a participant so that was kind of cool mm -hmm. to have Thank you come you. on yeah um but when you think about that work, what has that work been like since uh, Earthline? What what has your practice developed into? Mm. Like, honestly, so much learning. And I, mm. I feel like it's still, like, evolving yeah. a lot, as yeah, I'm yeah. sure, like, all of our practices oh, are. Yeah. Uh, but it's also been, like, so amazing to have, like, more, more people practicing oh, yeah, in in those ways um yeah I think at first it was just like I wanted to you know like get into it like yeah. start like tattooing people working with people like get like skin stitching into the world yeah as much as I could yeah um but then it got like really kind of like it's a lot it's like yeah. a lot of work it's like heavy work like emotionally and like working with other people yeah. is like really fulfilling, but at the same time, like tough it is, <laughs> in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. So, so then I feel like I kind of, um, didn't pull back necessarily, but was more thought out in like mm. the moves that I, yeah. I was making with my yeah. practice. So just trying to be more, specific about who I was working with and yeah. how yeah what sort of things I was like trading for so like yeah. monetary trade or like things that can like really sustain my mm. my livelihood yeah um and in the last so when I moved back to Saskatchewan I was like even more excited to like work with people um that like share this like territory mm like within their genetics you yeah. know what I mean yeah um but honestly in the last like year and a half I've been taken like a huge step back with tattooing yeah I don't think I haven't tattooed since like February of last year oh, okay. so February 2022 yeah, yeah yeah totally yeah but have been thinking a lot about it yeah <laughs> um, well, I think it's, yeah, it's a really good point to bring forward. And I think something that has been, uh, I've been talking about with other folks is just, you know, the heaviness, uh, the, the, the work that is involved in doing ancestral skin marking and cultural tattooing is, you know, as you said, uh, involved with a lot of people's stories, other people's mm -hmm. trauma, other people's journeys, uh, so yeah, it is difficult sometimes to carry that. And then I would also say, um, you know, there, there is a, a large importance for people who maybe who are listening, who are, you know, just starting on that journey to be mindful in their own practices, not mm -hmm. to get burnt out, not mm -hmm. to take on more than you're really able to. Mm -hmm. right? um, so it's just something to highlight. 
and I would just uh, want to give you an opportunity to share maybe why uh, you pulled away in the last year and a bit, because um, that's kind of exciting and cool uh, to have another uh, being part of oh, the tattoo yeah. family. Totally. <laughs> yeah, well, I I actually like started my master's degree, yeah. and then so I was really focused on like academics, yeah. which is originally why I pulled back, and then um, I found out I was like pregnant in the last semester of school. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I think I defended my thesis like six or seven months pregnant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which was which was cool. Yeah. That was chill. Yeah. Um yeah, and so I had my son in November mm. which has just been like so special and such like a earth changing friggin shattering thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> so different yeah. but um but yeah I decided not to tattoo during my pregnancy yeah, yeah. yeah just because yeah just because I'm not totally mm -hmm. aware of uh like the energy transference that happens when we're tattooing yeah. and and it's like my first pregnancy so yeah. I just really wanted to like spend time in that yeah. as much as I could yeah but like now that I'm uh so that was seven months ago and now I'm just kind of like starting to like focus on art again I'm yeah. like starting to like art has returned in like my dreams for the oh, first time cool. which has been like so exciting it's like <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like, hey, you can make work again. <laughs> yeah, you can think about things other than uh, yeah. sustaining this little little, little lump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, like, yeah. excited to start. And I'm also just, like, so excited to um, have a meal, like, grow up with that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, like, pursue it if he wants to. Yeah. But... Yeah. He doesn't have to, obviously, uh, but just like, you know, being around that is yeah. going to be so normalized for him. Yeah. 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 yeah um, that's been one of the cool conversations and realizations that I've actually had during uh, these conversations on the podcast is, um, you know, Echo's, Echo is one of my students who's in Thakutum and hearing how when uh, she travels with her children um they're just that's just what they do you know mm -hmm. it's just what you mm -hmm. know what happens at that cultural aspect of tattooing mm -hmm. you know uh is just what we're doing and i've always said you know that's my dream is that this work uh happens and it's special just because it's part of our culture not because mm -hmm. it's a revival movement mm -hmm. right and totally. so it's cool now uh you know i never even thought about it but yeah like you're saying you know your son is just going to grow up in it. And that's just what we do. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so, so cool. special. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty epic. And uh, it actually just blows my mind. And I would say that's one of the blessings of having these conversations is coming to realizations that you never mm -hmm. had before. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And that just like realizing like the, the reality of like revitalization is just like living in yeah. it and being able to like practice it. Like yeah. I feel like a lot of the times when we're talking about like tattoo revitalization, cultural things and all that stuff, it like sounds so big Yeah. because it is, yeah. but, um, realistically it's just like, it's just like growing up with like parents with skin stitching. Yeah. Yeah. And not just being a thing, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool to, uh, and I think you're right in that, um, the key is really, uh, just living with those practices, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's not necessarily in all of those ways that we tend to make things big. Mm -hmm. I think the bigness comes just because it's part of what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that's the way that, you know, uh, and I would say some of those things are also interesting differences between, say, like a professional tattoo artist and mm -hmm. a cultural practitioner. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of differences in that way. And I think, you know, maybe the professionalism or the environment of a tattoo shop 
you know, uh, protects people or uh, allows them not to deal with any of those type of energy type of challenges, you know, it's like, yo, you're getting your tattoo, you're here, blah, you know, okay, mm-hmm. you're done. Yeah. Whereas with this work, you know, we visit, we sit with each other, we share food mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, people, you know, share a lot about their journeys, their life journeys, which then is where that heaviness comes from. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I would just uh, lift you up and commend you for uh, stepping away when you needed to, you know, mm-hmm. I think uh, it's an important lesson to highlight So that people understand that, yes, this is a gift and we've been given it to practice it, but it's also comes back to us understanding the things that we need in our own lives, Mm -hmm. right? So I just want to highlight that as a, uh, a lesson maybe for people who are doing the work and are just starting in the work and realizing that, yes, you don't have to do this all the time. You don't have to say yes to everybody who wants it. Yeah. Right. And so just stepping Mm -hmm. back is like, that's cool. It's cool Mm -hmm. to uh, pull on that thread a little bit to understand because, you know, you're sharing something, but I wanted to highlight that that is a important thing for us is like, yeah, I just can't do it right now Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And people don't have to feel, uh, guilty maybe I don't know what the word would be to do it so yeah that's kind of cool um so you got your master's degree what were you doing for your master's where did you take it all that Um, type of stuff yeah I did my master's degree at the University of Calgary Mm. um my advisor was Judy Anderson Mm. a Cree beadworker phenomenal beadworker and um I also worked with Tanya Willard who was on my committee and um Aaron Sutherland. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like a dream team yeah, for me. Dope, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, but when I went into it, I wanted to like uh, expand my practice a little bit more into like embodied movement. Mm. Um, so for like folks that are listening that like maybe don't know about my art practice, yeah, I, yeah. I'm show a lot of beadwork. Yeah. Like th- my beadwork is like really popular and I love that, but I also have like a bit of a, a, contri- a contrived relationship with beadwork mm-hmm. and like displaying that. Um, so I didn't want to focus on beadwork for my, my thesis. Yeah. Uh, so I actually ended up doing a performance, uh, with bear grease and cool. the remnants of smudge, like yeah. charcoal. Yeah. Uh, and I mix those together to make like a salve yeah. of some sort or yeah. like a medicine of some sort. And I put that, uh, on the lens of the camera yeah. and then like covered my entire body with it yeah. and washed it off with like a cloth. Um, but the viewer can't see any of that because mm. of the grease on the yeah. lens, but it's still like recorded yeah. and shown. So it's like. Uh, so that grease really acts as like a literal protection mm, yeah, between yeah. the viewer and like the work that I'm yeah. doing. Uh, yeah, but then also like more of a, a way into like the conversation of like protection or like mm. working with cultural values and how sometimes that feels really commodified. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still something that like should be part of people's art practices if they want it to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I made that performance piece for my, my thesis. And when I wrote about what I wrote about for like the supporting paper was, um, just like my experience within the MFA program Mm -hmm. and how, uh, you know, it's still like really difficult to be like an indigenous artist working, um, in a space that's like, isn't indigenous centered. Yeah. Um, and how like it should be possible for artists to do that, yeah. like explore their indigeneity without being like othered. Or well, maybe that's not the right word, but I, I mostly felt like people didn't, um, give me like, the criticism or like the feedback mm. that I wanted in the program oh, that's interesting. because of yeah. like the ways in which I was working. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah so I kind of talk about that, but then I delve into like dreams as research. 
Um, so like dreaming designs, mm. pieces. Um, and I really focused on this one dream I had like years ago, like in 2016, maybe 2015 mm. that had to do with spider and like cosmology. Um, and so that was really the basis of a lot of the work that I was yeah. making in my master's yeah. degree, uh, which brought me to this like story, um, the creation story of like the Inu people, the Cree mm, yeah. people uh, that was told by Wilfred Buck. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard it. Mm. It's really gorgeous. They have yeah. like this rendition of him telling the story on, yeah. on CBC. Oh, cool. But essentially it's like you come from the stars from this, yeah. this Cosmo called uh, Pagone Kisik, yeah. uh, which is the hole in the sky and like, grandmother spider lowers you yeah. to the world from there and then once you're done wow. living in the world yeah. it's the string um of the spider that brings you back up to the stars and so wow. it's like it's so gorgeous <laughs> i love that story so much um and so i was focusing on mm. you know those sorts of things yeah. and trying to make like the untangible tangible in some way through like my artwork yeah through like the material i'm using yeah um or like trying to make a like a an experience for the viewer maybe yeah. like with the art that mm. i'm installing but yeah uh it was pretty trippy because like that has to do so much with like life and yeah everything and then I like got pregnant <laughs> and I was like, is that surprising? Am yeah. I really that surprised? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my master's was great in like being able to, mm. to focus on those things. Yeah. yeah. And so I feel like I, like when I'm researching my art practice, I'm like simultaneously researching my tattoo practice yeah. because I'm also you know, like working in the studio and creating artwork, but I'm also just like trying to uh, figure out how I want to live my life or yeah. like how I want to move in this world that in a way that's like aligned with um, like my Métis Cree yeah. values. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a few uh, cool things that just come to mind as I, um, think about the things that you share, you know, one of them is, uh, that idea of the, you know, the visual that I have of you, like putting that bear grease on the lens. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and how in my mind, the way that I think about that is the, you know, wanting to share some of those sacred pieces or maybe not sacred, but, uh, those powerful pieces of, uh, you know, our work, whether that has to do with medicine, whether that has to do with the tattooing, whether that has mm -hmm. to do with, you know, any of the stuff that we do, but protecting it, right? Saying mm -hmm. like, this is happening. You mm -hmm. can know it's happening, but you can't actually see the details. Totally. Right? Yeah. And so that makes me think of like, it's like the opposite. And it's really one of those things that we as indigenous uh, scholars and academics and artists are doing is doing the thing, talking about it, but not giving all the details, mm -hmm. you know, because th I always think back into some of the critiques of anthropology, you know, them just coming into uh, sacred uh, processes, ceremonies, dances, etc., and just recording everything. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so this is a process of us just taking that back so it's a pretty cool image that I you know pictured of you like you know? <laughs> and Thank then you. you know doing uh doing your performance you know and protecting yourself as well I mm -hmm. think you know mm -hmm. like you said that's really that bear grease is about protection and so mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty cool that's a cool uh image and uh there's a lot in there that I think that you're uh, what would you say, bringing forward to have a discussion about, which mm -hmm. is pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. Like when I was uh, researching Bear Grease mm -hmm. for that work, uh, I was reading like a, a lot about tattooing, like yeah. traditional Chippewa tattooing specifically. Yeah. 
um, and how Bear Grease was like a carrier for pigment mm-hmm. a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and and of course the charcoal yeah. from like burnt cedar or, yeah. or whatever it was. Um, but it's so interesting, as you know, reading those texts and we've talked about this before, how it is like just all of this writing about like, you know, what's happening, but no expansion on that like yeah. no actual like juicy story where yeah. you're like where it tells you yeah what's happening um so that can so it's like really like you're reading through these these texts but yeah. you're really trying to like read through the lines yeah, or like big time. put a puzzle together yeah yeah it's interesting um just going off what you're uh sharing is you know i've been writing <sighs> for the Oxford Handbook for the Anthropology and the Archaeology of Body Modification. Um, And it's been an interesting and difficult process Mm -hmm. because, you know, of course, the way that I write about it is about the experiences I have and the conversations I have and Mm -hmm. the history and the reason we're in revival, you know, like, yes, Mm -hmm. we had this practice, but, uh, you know, it's important to highlight why it went to sleep for a while. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, uh, you know, the editors come back and they're like, hey, can you write more uh, objectively and didactically? So they wanted to be to oh, write like yeah. you were talking about in terms of like this, you know, this, 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 uh-huh. you know, like and I'm like, no, that's not. <laughs> well, they want you to like fit this mold, right? Yeah. Like they've asked you to do yeah, it but time. then they're like but do it our way yeah yeah which it's was just... not possible no and that's yeah. what i said is you know i'm unwilling to erase the stories of my community and my elders yeah uh on the road to objectivity like i'm just not yeah. interested like totally. these are data points mm-hmm. but when you put them in a graph when you put them in uh, a table you actually erase them mm-hmm. right so i'm just like no i'm not willing to do that and so we'll see if it actually comes out because, of course, it's like that back and forth with them as editors and stuff, oh, right? Oh, yeah. But it's such an interesting reality that there's 60 scholars writing for this book. So it's going to be a huge book, but there's only two that are Indigenous, myself mm-hmm. and Maya, who is uh, Inuit from Greenland, mm-hmm. right? So there's mm-hmm. two of us out of 60, and I would say you know, uh, it wouldn't be a far fetch to say like 75 to 80% of that book is about indigenous knowledge. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's just crazy. I know. And it like makes me think like they, they have that like objective knowledge and way of writing covered through yeah. the other, yeah, exactly. the other people that they're including that it's like, wouldn't it be so lovely and yeah. like more supportive yeah. to let you write the way that yeah. you're meant to write it yeah 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 it's just interesting to you know it just made me think when you were like talking about uh the way that uh those things were written you know that mm-hmm. anthropological view and then i was like oh yeah it just actually made me think oh that's like totally the way they've been trained to do it mm-hmm. right and so yeah. when they look at it they're like this isn't enough because it's not in line with the way that we've been trained right mm-hmm. which is the thing i've been pushing against but mm-hmm. yeah that's interesting uh the one thing i wanted to circle back on was when i think about even the beadwork pieces that you show in gallery exhibitions you know all of that even though most beadwork is embodied a lot of times when it is in the exhibition it's not embodied in the same way and the reason i say that is you know of course you're wearing it on regalia Mm -hmm. you're wearing it those other ways but you present it in a different way Mm -hmm. when you uh the pieces like the things that you use to bead on are not the things that everybody beads on. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about that a little bit and how that's connected to that sense of embodiment as well? Yeah. Are you, you're talking about like the sock and glove pieces? Yeah. Yeah. Those, um, I feel like those are, they're used materials that I'm kind of adorning, uh, with ancestral materials like beadwork or quill work or whatever, whatever it is. Um, and for me, like the fact that they're used objects is like they're already like living. They mm-hmm. like already have that story in them, so yeah. it like doesn't make sense. Or for me, like 
it wouldn't add anything to like then wear those works because they've already been worn. Yeah. Um, so like the way that I personify them in my mind is at that point, they're like these like beings that are holding their own yeah. space, like yeah. within these galleries. Yeah. Um, but then there's also like a bit of a joke in there uh, because like by marking them with like beadwork, it becomes, mm. it like takes away its intended usage. Yeah. Um, so like the gloves, it's like you can't really wear the gloves, yeah, yeah. like the working gloves anymore, or else it will ruin, yeah. ruin the the piece. Um, so like the joke is that it then becomes art because it like lives on the wall. It doesn't yeah. have like utilitarian, yeah, uh, um, yeah, point anymore. Um, but to me, it mm. it doesn't matter mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's like a, its own thing. Yeah, yeah, its own energy. Yeah personality type thing but yeah. uh like with beadwork like showing beadwork in like a wider space of visual arts I feel a lot of the time um people will like look at the beadwork and be like oh yeah I get it like contemporary indigenous mm. artist I get it y'all are still alive yeah 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 <laughs> Like practicing your thing, yeah. Like whatever, yeah. But uh, so I feel like that's like really surface level and like mm. frustrating because yeah. I'm like, well, it's like so much more, yeah. Than that, most of the time I'm not even really thinking about reclamation yeah. with beadwork because I'm not reclaiming anything. Like yeah. that's not like a part of my story. Yeah. Um, it just is. It's just like something. Yeah. That I practice. Uh, yeah, and I'm not, like, re-indigenizing my family or, yeah. like, my way of living or anything mm. like that. Yeah. So to have that, like, narrative, like, put on my work, I find mm. to be, like, so frustrating and, yeah. like, devalue, yeah. devalues it. And so I feel like beadwork is, like, something that really gets put through the ringer mm. in that way. I don't know why. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, maybe because it's, like, so beautiful. Yeah. On its own, or it's very popular on like social media. But yeah. I feel like tattoos maybe uh, kind of like resist that a yeah. little bit more than beadwork. Um, maybe because it is like so young in its revitalization. Yeah, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I don't know why. I think about it sometimes. I Maybe. Yeah, I've thought about that, and part of it, I think, is, like, uh, the reality of, you know, uh, my own practice as a artist, you know, walks around on human beings, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, that work that I do um, exists on, like, the periphery of the Indigenous and, like, the fine art, visual mm -hmm. art world. Mm -hmm. And so, it's, and it's difficult to, like own that artwork yeah unless you're the person who wears it yeah right yeah uh, because yes you can take a photo of it but it's not like you can go out and purchase you know someone's yeah. arm that's wearing the work so i think yeah maybe it not resists yet. it Just yeah kidding. exactly yeah. <laughs> maybe uh maybe that's why is like because you can't you know well i guess i've seen exhibitions where they have you know mostly like tattoo models, you know, mm -hmm. standing in a box in a wall Yeah. and you go and they're like, yeah. it's like kind of a weird, it was a weird exhibition I seen. <laughs> they're like live people that are Here? tattooed. No, I think it was in the States or oh, Okay. I was going to say it sounds very like or Europe. German. Yeah. yeah. Europe maybe. <laughs> but yeah, just because I did a, you know, kind of a, uh, a literature review or like an exhibition review for the exhibition mm -hmm. I'm working on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so maybe that's part of it. And I think maybe it exists on the periphery. So there's less people talking about it, less people yeah. theorizing, less people yeah. like consuming it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like art criticism. You know, there's not yeah. many people mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. that for tattoos, especially cultural tattoos. Well, I think too, like just like listening to you talk it through something yeah. that's so special with tattoo work that I don't necessarily get in the studio um on my own is just like the 
the like living exchange. Mm. It's like just so in the moment. Yeah, and I really loved what you said about like not being able to own the work. Yeah. Like yeah. whose work is it? It's yeah. like yours. It's the person that's wearing it. It's yeah. like neither of yours. It's like the communities, yeah, depending on what the design is. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just like very, um, ethereal in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as a artistic practice. It's, yeah, it's interesting. I never really thought about it in that way. So, yeah, it's kind of cool to be mm -hmm. exploring those ideas yeah. and things things with you. And I would say, you know, I always say that, you know, like, it's a lot of times, like, in exhibitions or whatever, you know, it's the mark, you know, this this thing, the, the artifact that left, that's left behind from, mm -hmm. like you say, that exchange, like the mark, the tattoo, getting it, you know, sitting there struggling, bleeding, crying, mm -hmm. sweating, mm -hmm. you know, all yeah. of that stuff is part of that process mm -hmm. that you can't show in an exhibition. Yeah. You can't like, you can't commodify it. You yeah. can't like, um, capitalize on it. Yeah. It just is. It's just yeah. like a part of life that you're going to experience, yeah. you know, like, yeah. It makes me think on the way here, I was like, I'm kind of nervous to get this tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're gonna be tattooing me after yeah. with like um a gun like a machine not a machine gun, a tattoo gun. Yeah. Uh and I haven't gotten like a tattoo like that in a long time. So I was like, I'm a little nervous. Yeah. Telling my partner about it. Yeah. It's gonna hurt. Yeah. And he was like, uh, I'm pretty sure the last painful thing you went through was like childbirth. Like, yeah. <laughs> was like, yeah, but I'm so scared. But like both of those experiences mm. are like similar yeah. in that way of just like it's an experience, yeah. you know? Like you can, I suppose, record it and show it as like some sort of video art or performance or whatever, but it's just like it's not the same. No. no. It's just something that has to be. Yeah. Big yeah. Time. Yeah, that's one of the things, you know, uh, as a curator, as an artist, like trying to reach into to pull out for exhibitions, you know, for example, mm -hmm. in the Museum of Vancouver exhibition, you know, when you're doing a tattoo and somebody sits on the drape or say you're doing an arm piece and it goes all the way around, you know, you after you've tattooed and the person lays it down, it actually leaves a print. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm actually, we're going to posts we're gonna put them the drapes so if it's oh a bodysuit it's gonna be framed like you know uh -huh. it, it'll be an artwork uh -huh. of like a blood print mm -hmm. i love that and so but part of it's not only like part of it will be yes it's saturated in blood yes uh -huh. you'll be able to see part of the print you know whether that's a pattern or whatever mm -hmm. and then part of it's also the fact that it's like crinkled and you know uh -huh. like gnarled up because yeah. And like sweaty, you can see the sweat stains, uh -huh. right? The grease stains. Yeah. So it's like trying to ask this question of like, how do we bring those experiences that are part of the process of getting marked into the exhibition to make it visible? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the ways that I've, you know, started to think about it. Just yeah. because a lot of exhibitions, it's just the photograph. Totally, yeah. And I'm like, yes, that's important, but there's all this other stuff that yeah. people don't see. Yeah, it's like not adding anything that you wouldn't experience in like in a book yeah. per se. But yeah. um, that idea is like so punk and like so poetic, <laughs> and it like makes me think of uh, the conversation we're having about anthropology mm. and putting our bodies on display. Yeah, and so I think it's like punk because it's uh you putting your body on display yeah. like making that choice to show yeah, yeah. what you want to show yeah you know yeah and it's time. yeah 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 bringing that journey because i think and the other thing that doesn't get explored in exhibitions is like the pain like mm -hmm. you know it's also been this exploration that i've had with the iota institute and so yeah. they're a uh, art institute that primarily deals with bio art so a lot of the artists they work with work in that space of bio art and so having this conversation with them and trying to bring in the biological parts of mm -hmm. 
the practice of ancestral skin marking mm -hmm. has been an interesting exploration and exchange. And so this is one of the ways that we're bringing forward that experience of the blood, of the pain, the sweat, that mm -hmm. experience. And it's like, how can you tell that story of the journey that person took mm -hmm. while they were sitting there, if it was an hour, whether it was eight hours, um, yeah. how can we show that in an art gallery? Totally. It's all about like the marking of time. Yeah. Transference. Totally. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank I you. like that. Yeah. It's just interesting. Like trying to think about those things, but, um, circling back again, um, you know, you talked about in your MFA research and the stuff that you were doing in that, that you were trying to do less of that beadwork stuff and more of that embodied, mm -hmm. you know, performance, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, are you thinking about doing any more of that type of stuff as you're moving into coming back into your artistic practice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, when I was like thinking about performance like what is performance art the what is like the embodiment who are we performing for I kind of just like kept thinking myself mm. in circles because yeah. I'm like well when we're doing beadwork like I feel like I'm performing like yeah, I'm yeah. like telling a story I'm yeah. like you know trying to impress like my ancestors not that like performance art is about impressing people yeah by any means but like there is a presence within like studio work, mm. right? There's still an audience. It's just yeah. not like a, t in a tangible way, yeah. like in the same tangible way as performing for an audience would be, but there is still that like underlying mm. action, yeah. um, like l the leaving of like a mark in some mm -hmm. capacity that yeah. I think is still in alignment with performance art. So yeah. I'd be like, well, beating is performance for like, uh, my ancestors or like oh, beating cool. is performance for like ghosts, you know, yeah. 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 <laughs> beatings performance for like my future family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting to like, think about that, but I would like to, you know, explore mm. performance through video a little yeah. bit more, uh, just because I really am interested in like the lens as, as a tool to like subvert um, or like as a tool of protection. So mm -hmm. being able to use the camera to like block the viewer yeah. from seeing yeah. the performance, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh -huh. um, yeah. There's just so many thoughts, you know, I'm <laughs> just <laughs> racing. It's kind of a cool expo exploration that you're beginning that again, I think is, you know, uh, bringing forward a lot of important conversations that maybe we're not always having. Um, mm -hmm. And I think about the, you know, Keone says, uh, Keone, the Hawaiian cacao master, he says, you know, th it's through our hands that our ancestors live, mm -hmm. right? And so, and he's talking about the hand tapping for Hawaiians. But that's just what came to mind when I thought about the... Um, the comment that you made about, you know, uh, beating is a performance for the ancestors, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's such a powerful and kind of cool statement that I just wanted to pull out and maybe just look at with you for a minute <laughs> totally. and to yeah. uh, think about, you know, more mm -hmm. than look at, you know, because, yeah, we're just thinking about some of this stuff, right? <laughs> totally, yeah. Yeah, and I think... Uh, it, you know, it's an impression, right? The, the mark is an impression of an action. So I can see definitely how you're uh, framing it and thinking about it as a performance. But a performance maybe that isn't for everyone. Totally. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. The way that you're framing that. Uh-huh. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I'm like saying beadwork, but really it could it can expand into like anything. Yeah, any impression. Right? Yeah. Life is a performance for the ancestors. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's like a t shirt, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, um, huh. Cool. Yeah, it's cool, right? Uh, just a, 
frame the way you frame that and uh that's one of the cool things that i uh, appreciate about a lot of people who you know uh do their work but also think critically about it so i just wanted to hold you up in that because i can i can see that from even just this conversation let alone the different interactions that we've had you know since 2017 <laughs> or 2017 <laughs> right uh, but yeah, you do this beautiful work, you know, you can tell that it's crafted and it's, you know, uh, it's tight, beautiful work, but Thank you. you also <laughs> think critically about it and you explore it and you're using it, uh, as a way to think about the world. Mm -hmm. You're using your work as a way to think about the world, which yeah. I think is something to commend and to hold up so i just wanted to highlight that and hold you up in that experience that you do because i think you're bringing forward some really valuable insights uh from your practice into these conversations so mm. that's pretty cool thank you yeah that's awesome yeah thank you um i had a thought and i like totally lost it yeah, I do that all the time. I was like, what was I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I was just taking in the compliments. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's good. Uh, so, yeah, some people have a hard time doing that. So it's important to acknowledge you know, uh, those things. But yeah, it's um, cycling back to uh, tattooing. So when you think about that, what what is going to be your process of uh, bringing people into the work that you're going to be starting back into now? Hey there, listeners. It's Dion Casas, your host from the Transformative Marks podcast, where we dive deep into the world of Indigenous tattooing, ancestral skin marking, and cultural tattooing. If you found value in our episodes, we've made you laugh, or you've learned something new, consider showing your support by buying me a coffee on ko-fi.com. Ko-Fi is this incredibly creator-friendly platform where you can support me directly for just the cost of a cup of coffee. No subscriptions, no hidden fees, just a simple one-time gesture that goes a long way in keeping me on the air. Plus, Ko-Fi doesn't take a cut, so every penny goes directly into improving the podcast. From updating equipment to visiting with new guests as I go into recording season two. So if you like what you hear and you'd like to help me keep the lights on, head over to my Ko-Fi page, www.ko-fi.com forward slash transformative marks. The link is in the show notes. Well, when I left my practice, I got to a place that I felt pretty good about. Um, so like really focusing on having back and forth conversations yeah. with folks about the pro what the process looks like, timeline. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a pay, quote unquote payment, yeah. um, and design. Like that yeah. was the most important part was design. Yeah. Uh, and then, so once we kind of like figured that out, I n would invite them into my studio, which, uh, I like to think is like pretty comfy. Yeah. A uh, pretty homey. Yeah. Uh, and I would make like a tea for them, mm. um, made out of things harvested from the homelands wow, that's yeah cool. <laughs> and the idea behind that was just kind of like this like caring thing mm. through like nourishment yeah um i know a lot of people can be like nervous getting a tattoo so i thought yeah. that would be calming yeah and of course it's like an offering so if they didn't want it you don't have to yeah you don't have to drink the tea <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but then i have like this rattle and i would kind of like go over the the space with like this rattle and mm. um I found a little bit of an excerpt of like a Cree song that they would use mm. uh, during tattoos. It's mm. actually like in the Cree Indian book yeah. uh, by the Glenbow, but it's just like three words, oh, wow. like written phonetically. So yeah. like I never say it out loud, but I just kind of like say it in my head. Yeah. Um, and so like I try to translate it and I think it says something about like, these mark it's something about making marks mm. um like yeah focusing on these markings in mm. some ways so mm -hmm. i guess i just kind of try to like cleanse that area um energetically yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and then I have like my little protection things that I like to wear. Yeah. For my energy. Yeah, uh, totally. Including my tat, like I have little tattoos on my yeah. face, which are like for protection. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then we tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I try to like always let them know if this needs to be like a, a multiple kind of sitting thing. Mm. That's fine. Yeah. Even if it's like an hour each sitting yeah, totally. sort of thing or, but I'm also like the max I'll do is like three hours. Oh yeah. Because that's the max I can do yeah. <laughs> and yeah, still no, do a good job. Yeah. 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 And then we just kind of like finish up the tattoo and uh, there's like smudge, yeah. smudging going on. Yeah. And it's nice. I always feel like I'm friends with yeah, the people after. Totally. I'm like, so do you want to like hang out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing that I found with the bodysuit work that I've been yeah. doing. You know, spending like an 100, 120 hours with totally. somebody. It's like, oh, we just finished this. It's uh-huh. like, I won't get to see you every <laughs> I know. three or four months, you know. Because, uh, you yeah. know, it takes a year, two years sometimes to get that stuff done. Mm, um, oh, my gosh. But there is something that was kind of cool. Uh, what did you say? Uh, focusing on these marks is kind of like a rough mm-hmm. translation, uh, understanding of uh, mm-hmm. that those words. And I think that's probably just come to my mind that I think that's probably one of the differences uh, that I've been noticing is, you know, because there are different ways that we tattoo. And so part of it's just for adornment. Part of it is, you know, for healing, tattoo medicine type stuff. And I think it's that intention, you know, so that mm-hmm. focus. Where are we focusing with that work? And so it's kind of cool to hear that, you know, that's something mm-hmm. that, you know, your ancestors were thinking about highlighting and putting forward in... Uh, the song that's Mm -hmm. been recorded that's kind of cool it's so cool yeah yeah it's so like it's just such a beautiful experience and like every experience is so different sometimes they're just like fun you're like kind of being goofy (laughs) yeah yeah, sometimes they're like tough like they feel like really like oh yeah like i accomplished something you know yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) we got in there today (laughs) yeah I was like talking or my mom was telling me she had seen my cousin Mm -hmm. and my, I had tattooed my cousin a few years ago Yeah, and my cousin was telling my mom about the tattoo experience and she was like, yeah, Audie was like standing up, like was stitching me with this little needle. (laughs) I was like, was I? I don't remember that, but I do like, I believe it, but it's kind of hilarious to like, (laughs) Think about how hard you can get into the zone. Yeah. And then the other person's like, what is happening? <laughs> I, just picture, I just had a, a mental picture of like, <laughs> you like up on the massage table, like just getting in there, you know? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to. <laughs> just that mental picture of like, dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It like reminds me of like one of my favorite photos, which mm. is um, like two Inuit women beat tattoo tattooing yeah. and one of them's like laying on the ground on a blanket and mm. I think she's getting her face tattooed and the other one's just like over top of her and I'm like that's so powerful yeah and time. like as the whites would say like savage yeah I was savage <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's awesome and I'm like I want to embody that I want to be that yeah. savage one day. Yeah, I want to be that. I want to be savage <laughs> in that way. Yeah, yeah big time. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's kind of cool to uh, to hear the journey that you've been taking. You know, since tattoo school. Do you think that the process or being a practitioner and doing the work, uh, doing the tattoo work, uh, the skin marking, has changed? the way that you think about your visual arts practice? Like, what has that influence been, I wonder? Because it seems like, you know, the way that you're framing things is somewhat informed by the tattooing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. It may not be, and you can say no. (laughs) But, (laughs) uh, yeah, I just wonder what you think and what comes up when I put that out there. I mean, absolutely. I think they both, like, they both beat into one another, Mm. you know, 
in like a yeah. circle circular sense yeah um but absolutely like tattooing has been really helpful in my practice in ways like well specifically in um gee I don't know how to frame it like protecting my energy mm. I guess yeah I don't know if you ever like experience this but sometimes I feel like sometimes people want to get close to you just to like mine that information oh, yeah, um so it's like it's like that with tattooing yeah. but it's also like that with like arts yeah big time. um and so like I think tattooing has maybe like exasperated that experience yeah. for yeah. me just to like yeah which ultimately is like a good thing because then I'm aware of it and yeah, then I like big time. can try and be like kind to myself yeah in that way yeah, yeah. Uh, but then also like in terms of research, yeah. uh, different ways of researching, like yeah. the more, um, tangible sorts of researching, like going through archives, reading yeah. books, yeah. having conversations with people. Yeah. Um, and then like the more spiritual way of researching, like through dreams, mm. through just like sketching, yeah. uh, openly, like. I think tattooing's really just kind of like put that in the forefront of mm, importance, yeah. like for my practice. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Um, it's so hard to, I always know, like when I think about like the ways that my art practice and like tattoo practices are in a relation, mm. it's so hard to put words to it. Yeah. You know? Big time. It's kind of like, it just is. <laughs> yeah. They're connected, but yeah. Oh, well, I think it's, again, I think it's that just like tattooing as an artistic practice. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just is. And it, uh, it, uh, yeah, it just exists in that space. Um, oh, I lost it. I had a thought there. But it was gone. It's gone, I think. I mean, like, there's a spectrum to everything. Yeah. Like, there's a spectrum to art yeah. and tattoos. Like, some things are more embodied, I suppose. Yeah. We're, like, more researched. And some things are just done, like, on the fly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think maybe it just came to mind? Do you think maybe part of that reason it's not you know, it's on kind of on the farther end of that spectrum is because it can't be commodified in that way. You know, because we started that conversation about mm -hmm. maybe your artistic practice and you entering into your MFA mm -hmm. and talking about beadwork and how it's commodified, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know, isn't always necessarily a bad thing, mm -hmm. but maybe one of the reasons is, and then I guess it comes back to that statement that I said you can't own it you can't own the tattoo mm -hmm. so maybe that is one of the reasons why it is so different as an artistic practice mm -hmm. yeah I don't know just yeah I have no clue yeah <laughs> about anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's always what I'm like yeah I, I still don't know anything yeah cool. <laughs> yeah me too you know that's why we're having these conversations yeah. is to explore them yeah but that's a good thought you know yeah. like I love I I think it's, yeah, I love the idea of not being able to like cage something or yeah. hold on to something. So tattooing is really a great way to practice that. Yeah. Um, having like a say in, in your tattoo practice, I think yeah. it's, that's really beautiful. Like yeah. being able to personalize it so much. Yeah. 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 Big time. Yeah. Uh-huh. So when you think about, uh, when you were thinking about this conversation, was there anything you wanted to explore or any questions, you know, you have for me, anything that you were like, oh, wonderful talk about that. Did, do you have anything that comes up? Hilariously, Skin Indigenous came up. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've both been on an episode yeah. of Skin Indigenous, and I was watching mine, I think maybe for the second time ever, yeah. a couple of months ago, yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so interesting to see 
to just see it and like see what I'm talking about and yeah. like the very like seeds of ideas mm. being um, recorded. Yeah. And I would just like, I was like, I would love to do another episode, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like another one in 10 years just yeah. to like see that progression. Yeah, big time. Uh, in like my practice, but then also everyone else's practice because I know that it like, yeah. it, it expands so much. Yeah, so I just, I guess what I thought about when thinking about speaking to you about this was how much everything's just expanded. And oh, yeah. for me, the last six years for you longer, like yeah. it must be such a beautiful and yeah, it's, is it scary? No, it's no. amazing. Yeah. You know, uh, I think part of the scariness was in the beginning understanding how powerful this work is mm -hmm. and uh what would you say like how important it is mm -hmm. and that like i could uh, knowing that i couldn't do it all even yeah. though i wanted to yeah and knowing that it was like you know uh kione has shared you know uh in holding hawaiian tattooing that it is a burden and it is a, a difficult thing Mm -hmm. um and so for me it's beautiful what's happening now you know i can go yeah. to a tattoo gathering i was just at tyandanega and oh, cool. there's like people that are there that are brand new there's people that i don't know right Hell and yeah. so for <laughs> that's exciting to totally. go somewhere and not know who everyone is right or know how they're connected to me or the work that i have done you know maybe mm -hmm. i taught this person, they taught them, and then they taught them. And so mm. now there's people I don't even, you know, I don't know. So for me, that's so exciting and so uh, amazing because I realized that uh, I don't have to worry as much anymore mm -hmm. because the work's going to get done. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, I think part of that is probably because, you know, I've had just had my third heart surgery. So I think having a bad heart and knowing, uh, having that you know, my mortality, uh, mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. present knowing that, Oh, I got to go get my heart checked. I got to go. Right. And so part of the burden was knowing that, you know, my life will probably be shorter than everyone else's because I have a bad heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's always there. And so for me, part of that was understanding how powerful this is and I can't hold it you know, hold it and hoard it and keep it because it's so powerful and so beautiful mm -hmm. and so amazing that it has to be shared. Yeah. And so for me, when I look out now, I'm excited because yeah. I know the work's going to go and it doesn't matter if any of us are no longer here, it's just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. So that would be, you know, my response to kind of that question of like, whoa, is that scary to have that? It's exciting yeah. for me. Um, well, the beautiful thing is, like, your heart's being, like, shared with so many people mm. that it's it's going to be around longer than you already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. No worries. Yeah, that's awesome. So maybe you have that fear, but, like, it's already beyond you. Yeah. And so that's, like, so... Mm. Maybe it's comforting? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure it is. Uh, I guess part of you know i was talking with echo uh and one of her uh things is kind of decolonizing time and decolonizing you know work you know <laughs> uh decolonizing business i think she calls it and so you know sometimes i don't have the time to reflect and so i appreciate you bringing that forward giving me the opportunity to go Hmm, just think about it, you know, just because it's yeah. so busy, right? <laughs> yeah. You don't reflect on the airplane? Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm like... <laughs> Sleepy. Snoring. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, gee, I have like another question for you, but it slipped my mind, so maybe it's not important. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, no, it was actually, it's kind of interesting that you brought Skindigenous up because... When I was thinking about this conversation, I was like, oh, I got to ask you about it and mm -hmm. explore it. And then I forgot. And so <laughs> it's cool that you brought it forward. It was interesting because I was uh, the first person that they visited for the series uh -huh. uh, was in Salmon Arm. And then I was also part of the last 
episode oh, that they shot. So that was cool, which was with my friend Gordon Sparks, who's a Mi'kmaq uh, cool. practitioner. Cool. So he actually tattooed the side of my head as part of that episode. The Thunderbird? Yep, the Thunderbird and the little coyotes. Oh my gosh, those are gorgeous. And so, yeah, it was kind of cool to see that book ending of the beginning of those and then the last episode that they mm -hmm. shot. Yeah. yeah. You're like, still here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, and that's one thing that I was thinking when you were sharing is, can you remember as you were watching it, what were those seeds that you were talking about? that maybe have grown since the time that you shot that episode? Well, I was really taken aback with like how um, vulnerable I was mm. in a lot of what I was saying. And I just didn't really like understand myself as like a vulnerable, per vulnerable person at that point in my yeah. life. So it was cool to see me kind of like share those things. And mm. specifically, I think ta I was talking about growing up as like an indigenous woman mm. in a city uh, that was very like, you know, central, centered around like whiteness yeah. and how fucking hard that was. Yeah. And I was like, I can't believe I said that <laughs> publicly. <laughs> and I think I'm like, kind of like biting back tears in the episode. Mm. And so I'm just like, wow, now I can just kind of like talk about that mm. and understand that. Um, and like not get like emotional about yeah. it. And yeah. so it's been like, I guess for me, that's like such a reflection of like healing. Yeah. Big time. Uh, so that's like really special, but like other seeds that I recognize in that episode is I am talking about how I've been like, you know, doing this work f from for forever from like before I was born. Yeah. And what I'm really trying to like, talk about in that sentence is the fact that it's just like such a continuance mm. generational continuance yeah. um and i'm just like still all about that you know yeah. it's like such an important thing to yeah to live yeah yeah so yeah that was really nice yeah and i would say uh i just want to give props to niche media you know, the folks that uh, produced and put out Skindigenous, yeah. I think probably uh, the reason you were able to share in the way that you shared is just how dope they are as so a dope. company yeah. and the producers uh -huh. and the directors that they had on that project were pretty awesome yeah. and were able to uh, engage with us as Indigenous practitioners uh -huh. in a respectful way that allowed us to talk about the things that were important to us, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to give that shout out to them, yeah. uh, for producing that series. Who was your director uh, on yours? Mine was Courtney Montour. Uh, that was the same as I believe, uh, Gord had Courtney and, uh, Keith also had. Oh, okay. Yeah. Courtney, Courtney was very very cool yeah 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 i can't think of his name he's the owner of the company <laughs> <laughs> i was like uh, you can put it on the bottom yeah put it on the bottom of the screen and text <laughs> yeah 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 it's uh it was a you know pretty powerful uh experience and i'm thankful plus that was what when was that it's a long time ago 2018 i believe 20, yeah, 2018 was the one I did my episode. Whoa. Yeah. So, it's <laughs> a while ago. Yeah, totally. <laughs> do you feel the same way? Like, would you do another episode? Oh, I totally would. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, I think I'd like to do, I'd like to do some episodes, some more like that. Mm -hmm. I've been exploring some of that type mm -hmm. of stuff. And, um, yeah, it'd be cool to continue to do that but more from the inside, mm -hmm. you know, even because to be honest, I feel even though those were powerful, I think there's so much other stuff that could be explored if we had the opportunity to do it from us as practitioners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Like a reality TV show. Just Maybe. kidding. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, not really. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, no. Just yeah. No, but I, I, I see. I recognize what you're saying, and yeah. I totally agree. It's like, yeah. like co coming at it from uh, the experience. You know, you yeah. make something. Yeah. Richer. Yeah. 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 Big time. Um, 
Did your other question come back? No, I'm just like, I was just kind of like thinking about um, future goals of mine or like life goals of mine in terms of like tattoos. And uh, I always thought like if I had a child, I'd really love to like teach them how to mm. tattoo. But that's like a little bit far in the future, not necessarily something I can control. But I am thinking about like sharing mm. um, that like, sharing how to tattoo yeah. with other people and yeah. um, just how like I've been so slow at that and mm. I think I'm just trying to be really intentional like I yeah. do have someone in mind that I want to yeah. teach yeah. Um, her name's like Paulette Patra mm. or Poitras pronounce yeah. people pronounce it differently yeah. um, and we're just waiting for the, the right time yeah. That's cool. <laughs> to do it yeah yeah and I think the you know, as we waned away and uh, stopped doing Earthline and the tattoo schools that we were doing, you know, that was kind of my vision for the way that the work would go forward in terms of mentorship is mm -hmm. folks like yourself or others who are doing the work, other practitioners, you know, and I think it's more of a ancestral practice because you know uh, the values that you have and you know the things that are important to you and you know the people that you're going to get along with. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're yeah. almost like vetting the person you're going to mentor before mentoring them. Yeah. Right? Because it's so easy to pretend you're somebody on the phone or through an interview or for whatever, yeah. but and you're actually seeing them. Mm -hmm. You know how they live in the world, mm -hmm. right? And so you can be like, hey, you're the one, you know, I need to teach you how to do this. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. It's more um, of like an ancestral way of mentorship, I think. Yeah. That's a cool way of thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. A very like community. Well, not, I don't know about, well, community driven. Yes. But, uh, like more so about like relationship. Like yeah. Making relationship the forefront of, yeah. of that, which is like a way of showing care. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, I think, you know, uh, we, you know, we're kind of coming to the end of the conversation. Yeah, so totally. I just wanted to, uh, you know, give you an opportunity to share anything that you felt that you needed to share. Um, and if you don't, that's cool too. But I just wanted to give that opportunity uh, before we kind of patch off. Cool. I don't think I have anything else to share. Just thank mm. you for this lovely conversation. Thanks. It's like, it's so refreshing to like mm. talk to you about tattoos yeah. and I'm very much looking forward to seeing the conversations that you're having with others yeah. on, on your project. And it's like, so, I don't know. It makes me so happy seeing you do your thing mm. and like thrive at uh, it. Cool. And yeah. 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 Yeah, I owe a lot to you. Mm. Or, yeah. Well, so, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that, you know. Um, yeah, I think part of it is the, again, just being so busy, not having the time to sit with people and mm -hmm. not having time to, or maybe even opportunity for people to share that with me. So I mm -hmm. appreciate you sharing that with me. And uh, I take it in. I take it to my heart. And, you know, uh, to be honest... You know, for me, that is part of the payment for all the work that I do is mm -hmm. the relationships that I have mm -hmm. with the people, my tattoo family, yeah. right? You know, yeah. um, so I'm thankful that you took the opportunity to sit with me. It was kind of funny. I was thinking as you were like, oh, I make people tea to before we do their tattoo. And I'm like, I make people do a podcast with me before we do their <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> yeah, well. Make you feel comfortable. <laughs> no. You're like, welcome to my <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that just picture popped in my head as you were sharing that about making people feel comfortable. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're going to do a podcast and then we're going to do your <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> but, you know, the lights... I feel at home in the yeah in the, in the glow in the blaring light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm super stoked that you uh, came and uh, 
you know, were able to visit with me. And I look forward to doing another one, you know, as time goes on. Um, yeah. It would be super cool to, you know, uh, revisit some of these conversations that we've had. And totally. uh, to hear the insights that you're bringing forward. Because that's one of the things that I've realized as a scholar of ancestral skin marking is that sometimes those insights about the work come during the work. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's just something about, you know, uh, kind of ar- armchair scholars uh-huh. who it's not part of their practice. It's just something they're interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people reach out to me all the time from England, from here, from there, you know. Oh, and I'm like, well, what's your connection to the work? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to re- talk to me about it. But how are you connected? Oh, it's just interesting and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, some of that's important to have those conversations with those folks. But, uh, you know, there's something powerful that comes through when you're doing the work. Totally. And, you know, uh, it comes from that, as you would put it, the performance for the ancestors. Yeah. So thank you for bringing that thought forward. I'm going to be pondering it for a while. Oh, good. Yeah, that's cool. I'm curious to hear. Yeah. What, what you think of. Yeah, it's just an amazing, uh, poignant, you know, boiling down some of the realities of mm-hmm. the work that we do. That, mm-hmm. And also shares that fact that we don't have to share everything. Yeah, right? absolutely. Or like, what is sharing? Yeah. Like, maybe you share it with yourself or you share it with like someone close to you yeah it's like, just is that circle. not enough yeah exactly <laughs> you know and yeah it's kind of cool it's a it's a, a powerful statement that brings forward some uh maybe some further insights mm-hmm. so thanks for sharing that with me and i'm uh stoked to get rocking on your tattoo and then we'll uh hopefully talk to you again soon absolutely all right anytime all right bye-bye thanks dion Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by and taking this journey with me uh, through this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll just ask that you would go and subscribe uh, if you haven't already done so. And if you have subscribed, thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, following this journey. I just want you to remember that uh, no matter who you are, where you're from, what you've done, or what you've been through, that uh, you are amazing, that you are loved, and that we need you here today and uh, going into the future so that we can transform this world for the better uh, through our collective thoughts, actions, feelings, and our compassion for each other as human beings. Head on over to next week's episode where I talk to Amanda Joe. In this episode, we talk about Amanda's healing journey with receiving a intricate milk black work sleeve. Remember, every coffee helps me to bring you the content that you love. So head over to my Ko-Fi page and let's make something great together. And the last thing that I will ask you is to do me a solid and share this episode with somebody that you think will enjoy it. Thanks a lot and see you next week.